social media isn't real. Say it louder for the people in the back. Hey everyone, welcome back to Tea with Brie. If you're new here, extra special welcome. This place where we get cozy, we put on the lights, we get the vibes going, we have the candles lit, and we gossip about whatever the tea of the day is. And today's tea of the day is Tribe Wives, honey. And if you read the title of this video, you know that I'm making a case for trad wives. And you might say, Brie, why would you do that? You're the opposite of a trad wife. You're not a wife at all, first of all. <laughs> and nothing about me and a trad wife are really going together at all, except that, um, no, nothing is coming up. But I wanna to talk today about trad wives. I wanna talk about the fact that they're getting so much hate and why I think it might not be warranted. Today's tea is piping hot, so grab yours. So first of all, honey, what is a trad wife? A trad wife is short for traditional wife. When I first heard trad wife, I'll be honest, I had no idea what this term meant. This was, I don't know, a year ago, something like that. I thought it was something to do with, I don't know, trad climbing, like maybe you're a climber wife. Honey, I was wrong, I was incorrect. So traditional life, trad wife, is basically hearkening back to the days of the 1950s. Y'all know the aesthetic, I'll put it here. It's basically demure. How I do my makeup for work? Very demure, very mindful. Very delicate, very put together, very much homemaker. You know, you're, you have, but also homemaker in an aesthetically pleasing way. You look hot, your kids are clean and well-dressed and well-behaved and you never raise your voice to them and you're always making homemade sourdough and shit and butter and you're just like homemaking, homemaking, homemaking all day long and you love your husband and you kind of want to harken back to those days of like the 50s when that's kind of what women did. Now, small aside, it's difficult to be a trad wife and say you're a trad wife and also be on influencer on social media because honey, the two are not compatible. <laughs> if you're a trad wife, you're not supposed to be working. That's the point. You're traditional. You're staying at home and your husband's doing that shit. But if you're a very popular influencer on social media, Honey, what you're, you're a business mogul. You're a girl boss. You're not a trad wife. I can't even see the trad wife in you. You're spending hours a day editing <laughs> reels for Instagram and TikTok. Small aside, finished. Who are the trad wives in the social media space? Many of them have been drawing a buku amount of criticism at the moment in the last, like this summer has really been the summer of the deep dives on trad wives. <laughs> Quote me on that. But the biggest trad wife would be Ballerina Farm. Girl, I've read so many articles about her name, but I know it's Hannah Nielsen, I think. It's her actual name, but Ballerina Farm is what I'm gonna be calling her. So Ballerina Farm, our girl, got married very young, got pregnant very young. She was at Juilliard, pregnant, I think. And she basically dropped out and wanted to live a more traditional life, just raising her kids and not being a ballerina full time. So she did that and her and her husband bought a farm a few years back. They have like dairy cows and cattle and, they have chickens and they have vegetables and she makes sourdough from scratch and her kids are always in the background for videos. She's never yelling at them. She's making butter, she's making mozzarella and she's making it look easy, honey. And she's also making it all in a $30,000 stove. So what? Um, honey, it's giving generational wealth. The only way to make a million dollars on a farm is to start with two million. But basically the family, her family boundary farm is generationally wealthy. Her husband's father is like the owner of JetBlue. So the only way to become a trad wife in today's economy is to be generationally wealthy. Another really popular trad wife is Nara Smith. She's married to like Blue Bunny, Blue Bell Smith. I don't know what the hell his name is. She's got a couple of kids. Her aesthetic is very calm, very demure, very pleasing. She's dressed always in like evening gowns. She's like making everything homemade. She's making soda homemade. Honey, have you ever heard of it? She's making ice cream, she's making bread, she's making granola, she's making everything that her husband wants her to make and she loves it and she says she really enjoys it. She likes staying home. She likes doing all that. And also she likes making her family fucking a ton of money because you know she is. <laughs> Those videos are not free. Honey's got ads in there. So basically, I wouldn't mind a trad wife. Like, how do I, as a woman, get a trad wife? Because what I'm hearing is someone just like makes you food all day, takes care of your kids, looks super hot, is super excited to see you, and you basically don't have to do shit. Like, I'm 
into it. Also, they're also supporting you because they're influencers and they're probably making tons on brand deals. So it's like, you don't even have to work. So you have a trad wife and you actually don't have to work because of this trad wife, honey. Sign me up, sign me up. So let's talk a little bit about some of the very logical and very real criticisms against trad wives. So yes, they've been drawing criticism. One such reason is like promoting these antiquated traditional values where like women don't need to work and they just like submit to their husbands and blah, blah, blah. But honey, it's like, they're not even promoting that. <laughs> the matter of fact is they're filming all these videos. They're actually showing you that they are working. They're working women, honey. They're working hard. They're working to look aesthetic. They're working to bring you your sourdough bread that looks, you know, homemade as hell. So it's like they are working. So I don't really get that criticism as much because a bitch is working and if you're watching the video you can see it so you should be connecting the dots here another criticism is that like we don't want to set women back bitch our government is working to set women back like social media is a insane shit show and i don't think any one fad or aspect of it is setting women back any further than anything else the last criticism is that they're very inauthentic because you have Nara Smith looking amazing, glamorous, super beautiful, like a model and cooking. She doesn't have like a crumb on her. Her kids are just on her hip. No one's screaming, no one's crying, no one's throwing things and her kitchen looks perfect. Everything looks perfect. And the criticism is that that is inauthentic. Similar for Ballerina Farm. She's got like nine kids, eight kids. She won like beauty pageants. She's like hot. She like milks cows and shit. And people are like, it's not real. She must have so much help. And apparently she says she like doesn't really have help, but like the inauthentic argument to me is very difficult to pay any attention to seriously because, and I don't know how to say this without blowing your entire mind, but social media isn't real. The fact that I need to say that makes me feel like we've all just gone a little cuckoo um, because we're talking about someone filming a segment of their life and we're angry because we, they're, it's not real. Duh, bitch, where have you been at? The internet isn't real. Social media is the most, un, one of the most unreal aspects of the internet. If you're going on to Instagram or YouTube and you want really authentic connection, you should get off of that and go, I don't know, smell grass, touch it engage with it, speak to a human, pet a dog, like do something like that. Because duh, social media is inauthentic. I'm not gonna blame trad wives for being inauthentic when every aspect of my scroll is inauthentic. Name one influencer over, I don't know, 100,000 followers who has no ads, who's not trying to sell you anything of their own brand or someone else's brand, who isn't trying to convince you of something. Everyone has an agenda. Everyone's trying to get their coin, baby. Can we fault them for that? I don't know. It's like, to me, this is gonna be a wild analogy, but hear me out. You have like OnlyFans, right? You have women making decisions about their own lives and their own bodies and their own value systems and engaging with their viewers or the people who, the men, generally speaking, who interact with them in a way that is not authentic and everyone kind of knows that. They're telling this man, I love you or whatever in the DMs and honey, we all know that's just not real. On the other hand, you have trad wives who are also women making their own decisions and making money and also selling something that is inauthentic. And it's like, why are we so confused about what's real in this case? Because they're not on OnlyFans? Girl, it's all fake. And to me, this, it, this is like a problem with greater society, right? That we have forgotten that the way that people portray themselves online in order to sell things and make money isn't real, duh. It's like when you go to a car dealership and someone's really nice to you, the car dealers are like really nice to you, they're offering you coffee, they're offering you tea, and then you don't buy the car and they kind of get pissed and they don't pay attention to you and you're like super mad because you didn't understand that what was happening was not an authentic relationship. It was, it was a means to an end, baby girl. It was a means to an end. And I feel like trad wives have just become yet another aspect of being a woman that we have to criticize and bash down and whatever and whatever and whatever. And it's like, do I want to be a trad wife? Fuck no. I want a trad wife. <laughs> 
I don't want to be one, bro. I don't want to. I don't want to wear these dresses. I don't want to bake sourdough. I don't give a shit about homemade butter. I don't care about having 800 kids. I don't care about any of it. But also, do what you want, girl. These people should be able to do what they want. I mean, it's like, I just don't see why every couple months, every couple weeks, honestly, there's another aspect of something about women that everyone hates and has to tear down. There's the pick me girl, there's the trad wives, there's, it's just like the list goes on and on and we just like hate all of them. And it's like the ways to be a woman have become so minuscule that like your behavior can fit within this small circle, this small sphere that's getting smaller every day in terms of like what is acceptable. It's annoying because one, you see nowhere near the same criticism for men. Men can live their lives in a variety of debaucherous, disgusting, vile ways. And no one is like dissecting every single thing they've done with their life to tear down the brand that they've currently built. It's just a double standard and I don't appreciate it. Also, I don't have to like agree with someone's values. Like people can do what they want within the realm of the law and not like fucking up other people's shit. Basically, it's like if you want to eat 400 raw eggs a day baby girl and you want to post about it it's like that's what the that's kind of the state of the internet to be honest there's probably a subreddit for you you can probably engage with like-minded people why are we always coming for these women who are just living their lives and making a lot of coin doing it okay it's like do i morally morally do i agree with it do i agree with making coin on the internet well it would be hard to hate on every woman who's making money being an influencer or being a presence online because that would be like a lot of women to hate on sides that would be more conservative and sides that would be more liberal. So basically what I'm saying is I feel like the criticisms that are labeled against Tradwives, and if you Google Tradwives right now on YouTube, you're going to see a myriad of just deep dives and hate and like why these women are so terrible. They're selling an inauthentic message to, to who, bitch? to people who've either grown up on the internet or people who are used to the internet like us. So it's like, if you're not getting it by now that social media isn't real, I don't think you're ever gonna get it and you should probably just get off of it. This brings me to my other point about this, which is like brand versus authenticity. This plays a lot into another phenomenon that I really wanna talk about, which is like the super fan or you know, the mega fan where the parasocial relationship is just so intense that people are acting all kinds of fools all over the internet, all over Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, just being ridiculous because they feel they have mistaken what is a brand for what is authentic. And you can argue, I mean, I think you see this the strongest with Taylor Swift, right? That she's super authentic with her fans and all her songs are like, you know, they're all so deep and real about her life and she's so vulnerable with her fans. But at the end of the day, sweetie, it's like, you don't know her. And I think she would look at this video and be like, yeah, bitch, they don't. She releases very small, very segmented, very controlled parts of her life that are very cathartic for her and then puts on a show and you see the show and you mistake it for something that's real. It's real, it's a real show. But it's not, re it's not like real. It's not like a deep friendship. It's not like living with someone. It's not like being in partnership with someone where you see all aspects of who they are, how they make choices, how they act when they're stressed, blah, blah, blah. It's like, it's not, it's not authentic. And so I feel like the reason that trad wives are making people so mad is because yes, they're selling a message that what they're saying is authentic and that their life is authentic, but the onus is on you as someone consuming internet culture to draw a differentiating line between like what somebody says and what is what is a brand and what is real, what is authentic. Everyone's selling you something. <laughs> Everyone's trying to make their brand seem and appear as authentic as possible, but that's just not, it's just not accurate. And the more money you stand to gain, the more tightly you're gonna wanna adhere to this, right? Um, because it, it makes people feel like they know you. It makes people feel like they want your fucking flower that you're selling, girl, I don't know. <sighs> I don't know, y'all, I'm up in a tizzy. I'm up in a tizzy. What are my action points? What am I really saying? How can I distill all this into a TLDR? My TLDR is this. One, let the trad wives be. There's always gonna be push and pull in culture. As things become more liberal, there will be a push back against that and a desire for the past. This has happened as long as human beings have existed and it's not gonna stop because you post a giant expose dissecting a woman's life and calling all of her choices terrible. It's not. Two, don't forget that the internet isn't real. 
soon we'll have AI and the internet will become, I mean, we have AI right now, but we'll have better AI where the videos will become indistinguishable from real life and we will have even less reality on the internet. We're hanging on by a thread as it is and it will get even worse. That thread's gonna be cut and we're just gonna be free falling through internet space time into deep subreddits that we never want to get into. That's for another time. What I'm saying is the internet isn't real and you need to believe that. If you can go throughout your day believing that the internet isn't real, things like this won't bother you. Point number three, just because there's a lifestyle choice that you don't agree with, that you don't want to participate in, it doesn't mean someone else can't. Just because you don't want to be on OnlyFans doesn't mean someone else can't be. Just because you don't want to be a trad wife doesn't mean that someone else can be. Do I want to be a trad wife? No, period. Thank you ever. Get it away from me. But I'm also smart enough to know that I don't have to engage with something that brings me displeasure. Beauty of the internet. My fourth and final point is that if you take anyone's life i don't care who it is and you dissect it this is including your own life it's gonna look disappointing to a lot of people including perhaps yourself you're gonna see things beliefs that you held where you're like "Ooh, that was not ideal that i held that and it's just like it's annoying that we are continuously putting women through this level of intense scrutiny when it's like is it needed? None of us are coming out clean in the court of cancellation law. Every one of you bitches, I don't care what color your skin is. I don't care if you're a man, woman, trans. I don't give a fuck what you identify as. Y'all getting canceled if we play your entire life start to finish. Something in there ain't gonna be good. So it's just like, instead of spreading someone's life out on the table and dissecting it with the precision of a neurosurgeon, it's like, we can just let some things go. There are more important things than dissecting the lives of trad wives. That's what I'm trying to say. That's my tea and that's my take for the day. And I'll see you all next week.